Have you ever dated someone who showed up very secure and open in the beginning only to have them suddenly pull away? Or perhaps they came on really strong at the beginning, but to only have now cooled off now that the relationship has set in? If this sounds like you or someone you know, then I'm going to briefly explain something about avoidant attachment. So many people who have dated avoidance have said that in the beginning, they put in so much effort. And that effort was one of the most attractive things about them. Only to eventually cool off or pull away or just seemingly put in less effort overall. Now, some people will say that this happens because they were trying to win you or they hadn't yet pulled off their mask and they're just trying to manipulate you until they show you who they truly are. Now, in the case of people with diagnosed narcissism, this can certainly be true, but in the context of everyday avoidance, I can assure you they're not doing this out of malicious intent. Their attachment style and the very way they go about creating connection has been shaped by relational trauma in the past. This is a really important thing to consider because it shows that they didn't choose to be this way, at least not intentionally. Like the anxious attachment style, the avoidant attachment style is programmed to operate out of fears versus emotions, and they do this by proactively limiting their likelihood to potential threats. So really, they just operate out of a fear versus emotions mindset, sort of like everyone else. In the beginning, as they're getting to know someone, the relational trauma, meaning all of that baggage and judgment that comes from dating someone long term is practically non-existent. You both hardly know each other at this point and you're practically strangers, which is why many avoidants feel more comfortable to put in a lot of effort in the beginning. The conversation is usually very shallow and surface level, so at this point you're really not getting to all of those messy bits that kind of make up who we are behind the scenes. Some of them may even still have this fantasy, idealized version of you that's constantly replaying in their head. It's only when this fantasy element wears off that the reality of what having a relationship is like with someone begins to set in and their deactivating strategies can begin to kick in as well. If you want to learn more about avoidant deactivating strategies, then feel free to check out my profile. I posted a video about this recently. So it's only when the reality of what it's like to date someone can truly set in and they can begin to pull away. They have to be open and vulnerable up to a certain point, and they even have to begin to sacrifice certain parts of their independence. It's also important to consider that they suffer from a wound that is linked with feeling not good enough. And it is a very strong motivator for many avoidance. If they can get a relationship with you, if they can win you, if they can get your approval, then they can prove to themselves that they are lovable. And very often in pursuit of this, many avoidance can sometimes lose sight of what it means to get to know someone. When you do reach that point where you have to start to be vulnerable and you have to be intimate and start to open up, that's when they can get really scared. And given they've had a childhood where they've experienced harsh criticism from their caregivers, their fear of intimacy is actually an extension of limiting their exposure to criticism from others. Their ego has been so beaten down and bruised over time that they've actually learned to avoid this proactively as a means of survival. Because when you're stuck living with people who treat you like absolute garbage, your psychology literally takes over and shapes you the way it needs to in order to survive. And essentially, that's why they come on very strong, only to eventually become cold and distant. They have a deep desire to be loved by others because they lack that in themselves. Many times, they're chasing the love and support that they never received growing up from their caregivers. Of course, this can indirectly hurt those around them, but the ones who are putting in the work to become better, to reprogram their deep subconscious wounds, shouldn't be lumped in with the bad apples that may have abused us and failed to take accountability for it. If you want someone to blame, it's not entirely all on the avoidant person that may have hurt you. It's also the people that hurt them, and those people that hurt them. This is generational trauma that we're dealing with here. And it takes deep kindness and patience to understand why people show up the way that they do.
They don't always mean to do it maliciously, but it is on them to take accountability for what's happened and how they can change. And if you're with someone that is incapable of doing that, then that's more of a decision that needs to be made by you, not by them.